Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this presentation. This is called uh, Generation Minecraft, Kids Building Software. Uh, this presentation has two parts. Uh, there's the, uh, the fun part, uh, like dessert uh, in a meal that comes at the end, where my crafty minors who are here, I can do some crafty mining. Right, they're much better at it than I am. Um, and so I'm very excited about that. Uh, and then like, uh, like uh, so look at this as a meal, you have to have a robust, hearty main course where you know, uh, this old person will talk to uh, other fellow wonderful people uh, about the state of creativity, why it's so important, and uh, I think some of the things that we need to do. Um, this is not a slide. This is even more zen than Presentation Zen talks about in slides because um, there are various problems, but what this is is actually a website. Um, I tweeted the link to this, but it's genmc.herokuapp.com, and so you'll be able to look at this offline. It should work just fine on mobile devices. Uh, but it's really a pretty good takeaway version of everything that we're going to be talking about here today. Right? Um, I've got a visual outline uh, and, a, and a mind map, if anyone's seen those. Um, my whole spiel is pretty much here. Uh, when the video comes out, I'll update the page and we can watch the video. And then uh, the kids, the, some of their favorite Minecrafters, uh, we can find those links there. Um, so uh, with no further uh, delay, I'm very pleased to introduce my uh, biologically indentured subject matter experts. Uh, if I could please have my son, Steve, come up. Uh, and if I could also have my daughter, Hero Brian. Oops. These are not their real names. <laughs> okay, so um, very good. So right, so this is the appetizer portion of the meal where we're going to get up and talk and, and do the introductions. Um, I just wanted to prove that yes, they're actually here, and yes, they actually will be talking about Minecraft because I, um, I do have a fair number of things to say. Um, but while we're here, I want to uh, start off with them uh, present because this is important for audience participation. Uh, knowing that putting the word Minecraft in the title of the presentation will invariably bring people who like Minecraft to it, I still want to ask, um, if you have ever played Minecraft, would you please raise your hand? Okay, wow, that's like everybody here. <laughs> nice. Okay, so the more specific and interesting question, uh, if you know anyone these guys' age that plays Minecraft, please raise your hand. Okay, that's like the same set of hands. That's, <laughs> that's really a lot. Um, so uh, that's really exciting because Minecraft, uh, video games actually do more for creativity than schools do for kids. Uh, and Minecraft, I think, is one of the best uh, games that, that helps with that. So you guys raised your, raised your hands, right? No, it's OK. <laughs> so we're all very nervous. So all right, thanks, guys, very much. I'm going to call you up in a little bit um, after I'm done with the, uh, the, uh, the boring stuff here. All right, so thank you very much. Very much appreciate that. So, um, right, so my concern here is um, uh, it focuses a lot on creativity. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about a variety of different things, but uh, cr creativity is really, really uh, important. And it, there's a really good opportunity with the internet, right? The ones and zeros that you used to make botnets, you used to make uh, League of Legends or Hopscratch, right? None of these have to be fracked out of the ground. You know, I don't have to, you don't have to have all this really expensive machinery to go, you know, to go get these natural resources, right? Um, that's not the case uh, with computers, or that is the case with the natural resources in the natural world. You need a lot of equipment to, uh, to be able to access these things. But ones and zeros um, are a fundamental part on the internet, and how you ar arrange them is uh, a creative effort. I firmly believe that programming is a creative effort. Right? There are many of the same ways to achieve the same results. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but there are different ways, and you pick the way that you're most comfortable with or that resonates with you. So that's one of my tenets, is that programming is a creative approach, uh, and I think everyone is creative. Um, so the creativity really comes to bear much more on the internet because um, the ones and zeros are there for everybody, and uh, it's, it's a great opportunity for you to be able to make something. So that's the, that's the opportunity um, is there. Um, um, <laughs> it's, it's a really good opportunity for kids to be able to produce, to create. And I'm not specifically just talking about coding. Uh, in the hopscotch session, which was wonderful, uh, if you get a chance to watch that, please do. There was a lot of talking, uh, questions about coding. And if you look at games like, there's a whole spectrum. League of Legends, for example, right? Is there anyone from Riot Games here right now? It's a question you can only ask like at Stranger 
So very good. So um, at, uh, at League of Legends, right, I mean, what percentage of the team actually write code? Right? I mean, not 99% of them, not by any stretch. It's a huge, complicated thing with, with visual design and with music and uh, you know, uh, characters. There's just so many characters to pick from. So coding is not the only way that kids can contribute in the future. right? So it's important that they be able to, so creativity is just a general purpose tool. Right? Um, and so that's going to be really good in the future because, uh, well, when I was their age, uh, CompuServe was the internet. Anyone ever have a CompuServe account? All right, that's OK, right? So you had your, your Octal user accounts, right? Um, and the one fun little fact about CompuServe, uh, they had 36-bit servers, right? Their words were 36 bits. Your, your bytes uh, all had a parity bit. So you could detect half the problems. But anyway, so, so that was the internet in my generation. And boy, it's just come and gone so far. Um, and then I worked for AOL since they killed uh, CompuServe with a barrage of floppy disks and, and CD-ROMs, right? And then that kind of became the internet. Now the internet is actually just the internet, or except for grandma. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so what will it be when they get older, right? Well, we know that more of the world will be online. They're going to be competing against a bigger percentage of the world, right? More people out there are going to be ready to automate stuff. So if we, if we focus on coding as the most important thing we can do, that's really, if you're a programmer, making a step in their future, a step out of your past. Right? It's the same thing as a, the bat, the glove, the ball that someone pushed in your hand that you didn't like. It's the same approach. So I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but it's, it's a concern that, it, that I do have. Um, right, so, in the, so this is the, the challenge. Um, if you don't develop your creativity and you choose to work uh, on computers in the future, you're only going to be able to do uh, other people's ideas. And you're going to be competing against a bigger portion of the world. So I think it's really important that you are able to be creative um, because then you'll be able to uh, start your own ideas and move forward on those. Um, right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my uh, mind map here very briefly just to give you an idea of the sort of things uh, that, oh, right. So this is the Wi Fi. Ah, right. So that much uh, is on the internet. Sorry. So, but this is all. This is all running locally, and you can access all the same stuff. Plus, you can actually see this uh, this big outline. Um, right. So, the the problem with uh, creativity, depending on creativity as a general purpose tool, is that who is encouraging creativity? Schools are doing a terrible job. Right. Seymour Poppert, um, uh, he wrote a book uh, in 1980, Mindstorms. Right. Um, Samantha, I also recommend it as something you can actually. Uh, uh, as a really good next step if you're concerned about any of this stuff. Um, right, so he said, uh, you know, in 1980, uh, someday computers will be as affordable and cheap as televisions, right? And they'll be a, a tool that can revolutionize education, right? We may not even need schools. So it has come true that computers are everywhere. I mean, we have computers here, we have just, just everywhere. And the quantity of time kids are spending on the computers is increasing. The quality of time is really not increasing. Um, and so one of you know, the, the standardized tests, uh, this is uh, something that they spend a lot of the time on, office skills and typing. Okay? None of these things encourage creativity. It's, it's really, uh, uh, it's the creativity is almost the opportunity cost. Right? The, all this time they could be spending just doing free form exploration and producing something, anything kind of honing your creative skills, they're not. They're picking from a pre chewed list of choices, uh, which is unrealistic because it's, you know, there's no one in this room that's ever impressed anyone or got a promotion because they picked you know, the most plausible answer correctly. Um, so, uh, and it also leaves a bad impression in kids' mouths. This is not the way adults use computers. Right? We rely on Google. We rely on Stack Exchange to, to load and store information. But what we're making the kids do uh, is be a little biological load and storing devices. We just, they, they're like a foie gras, right? We shove a whole bunch of information so they can regurgitate it correctly, and that's their experience they have on a computer. That's terrible. You don't want them to look at a computer as, as like, you know, a regurgitation area. And what they know that it's not really used that way in the real world. The other problem uh, is a bit of a perverse incentive for teachers, right? I'm here because I had a couple of teachers really make a difference in my life. Right? They took the time to help one kid that needed something that they recognized, and they made a big difference. 
So with standardized tests, the teachers who are systematically rewarded uh, for making kids the same. So if that's where your focus is, trying to make as many kids as the same as possible, it's a disincentive to actually help any one kid be different, to make a difference for any one kid. And so my fear is that the, um, the next generation of teachers, who's going to apply to that if they know that the people who are more successful are the people who crank out you know, the most cookie cutter kids? So that said, if you do want to make a difference to generation, please teach. Please. It's a wonderful thing. Don't give up. Um, I'm confident that we will uh, get all this, this mess sorted out. So, um, right. So, um, okay. So, at this point, I want to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and ask some kids some questions. Um, if I could please have Hero Brian come on up. Thank you, sweetie. And we're going to go ahead and launch Minecraft. Like I said, this is definitely a Minecraft presentation. Um, so um, let's see. Can you come on over here? So first of all, thank you for being here. And you don't have to be too close. That's probably about good enough. So tell me, uh, what is the server? Um, a server is like a playground, but online. Um, people can play, can get off. And it's overall just fun, really. Okay. And you can share ideas with each other. And again, like my dad said, just create everything. Thank you. Uh, so tell me about collecting taxes. Um, well, as you might know already, I own a server. Or mm -hmm. it was given to me by my dad. And nope, not that. Okay. Go ahead. And so, so, um, the, so the server. So the server is where it's something that we control. Right, and it's something I've set up. Uh, I've accessed all the chat logs, so I know who's talking to who when. Uh, it's a great mix of boys and girls. Uh, mostly boys. Mostly boys. Yes. What? There's only like two other girls who oh. get on. Well, okay, but I know what they're talking about, um, <laughs> which is really good. So I want to look at the world you guys have built together because this is really neat. Um, and Steve, I might need your help on the full screen for. What are we looking for? We're looking for. Oh, your hero, Brian. That's who yes. we're looking for. What can I find this? Ah, thank you. What's the full screen for? Do you know? F11. F11? Mm. Oh. Not that one. Is it this one. Here, we can either drag it or here. Can you release the mouse? Yes. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, this is a world that they have uh, worked uh, hard to build, but it's a it's a digital playground. One of the big benefits is that we moved uh, quite a f quite away from their friends. Um, and they were able to use Minecraft to, which had none of this, by the way. This is just, this was just a flat world. This was just nothing. Um, and they, they, they put it together. I mean, so what are we looking at here? Um, a floating ship, apparently, and one of my favorites, my castle. All right, let's go see it. I spent a very long time on. And it's filled with chickens, by the way. I like chickens. <laughs> and I named them. Is this one? Yes. What's that? Go back. I missed it. Niall Waddles? Bert Waddles? Yes, I need them. Philip Eggers? Hmm? Mario Waddles. <laughs> Very good. Um, and just to really underscore that the real world does come into play, um, she happens to have an irresponsible father who was doing a bad job of backing up the server. Um, and what happened? Um, someone. One of my friends from out of town, um, and he showed the server to his friend, and he gave, you know, they're kind of sharing the account, but then uh, the friend of my friend thought it would be funny to grief me, killed my dogs and all my horses, and so they replaced everything in my house with cake. I did not appreciate that. So, so you can publicly shame me and slap yes. my wrist. Go ahead. Um, um, so, right, so this is the real world. I mean, the kids bring the, the same things that they do in, the, in the, the playgrounds and such here. I mean, they were just kids being kids, right? This was, this was just young kids uh, being young kids. Um, OK, now, what do we got? Is that Epic the donkey? Yes. No, it's a, it's a mule. It's a mule. What's yes. the difference between a mule and a donkey? Um, mules are hybrids. Oh. <laughs> Good job. 
So, um, right, so this is one of the worlds. Do we have uh, any of the other worlds that you wanted to look at? We have the Monk Swamp world. Oh, the Monk Swamp, right. So this, so this is something that they've been able to build on their own. Um, and so it should just say, that's here, O'Brien. Um, and then also there's a fantastic community. One of the great things about Minecraft is um, uh, it has a humongous community. Um, uh, that's okay, that's I'm single player. I'm not opting on Monster Rival. You're not opting on survival. Why don't you jump off the edge and, and show everyone what that means? Because I'll die. <laughs> um, so this map was made by someone else. And, uh, and it's just really amazing. If you haven't seen uh, some of the things that the people do, all right, now you're making us all motion sick. <laughs> ah, there's a splat, okay. <laughs> um, why are we not, this is single player, should have. So anyways. Um, oh, hold on, I have it, I have it. Ah, cheating, yes, just like the real world. Um, <laughs> Right, so they don't have to, you don't have to start them off in a flat world and expect that kids will magically um, build these amazing things, right? And my, I was kind of turned off in my first exposure to Minecraft because I just didn't feel like I was ready uh, to do these sort of things. And it's just, it's really sort of intimidating when you see all the things people can do. Um, so there are good, there's a lot of community out there. Um, there's a lot of uh, good maps. There's a lot of people on YouTube. Um, is there anybody that uh, specifically comes to mind that you might like to mention? Um, I have Cupquake. I really like her videos. I have, I have Cupquake. These are on the, uh, the website as well, the things that we're mentioning here. Um, right, um, earlier I said that um, uh, Minecraft does better, or sorry, uh, video games do better than schools do it, encouraging creativity. Um, that's, most of them do not. Most of them, like, uh, you're going to hone your, collaborate, your competitive skills. Uh, you're doing one-on-one -on -one deathmatch sort of stuff, right? So competition is good. The world is competitive. Uh, if you play League of Legends, you know that's a, a, a game that requires collaboration, which is also important in the real world. But none of those are actually a creativity, or enhance your cre creativity. But Minecraft really does allow you to do uh, competition and collaboration, and it does reward creativity. People build stuff that they like, and it's good for them. I'm just doing commands, don't mind me. Don't mind you, okay, all right then. So very good. Um, it's been something that, uh, that I've been really very um, positive about. One of the things that we do at home is we use what we call creative time, so the kids can practice their creative skills. I think creativity is a skill like anything else, and I think it can wax and wane based on your application of it. Uh, and it's easy to get a negative uh, feeling about it and to give up completely and say, I'm not creative enough, I'll never be creative, uh, because somebody said something I did sucked, or even where somebody uh, didn't, do any, didn't respond to something I did, they just ignored me. It's sort of the worst of all worlds, right? Um, but this is something where um, she's able to use something, use a computer in a way that is not, uh, um, not totally uh, trivial, right? This is not trivial. This, we're working on typing in commands, and we're working on um, a lot of different stuff. So, very good. So, what are we doing here? Um, I set this account to a team, mm -hmm. and. On the team, I can change colors of the team name. So whoever's on the team mm -hmm. will have their name changed from white to the team color name. So oh. hold on. All right. So you can get uh, points and such? Yes, but I have no idea how to do that. You'll have to ask Steve. <laughs> Speaking of Steve, I think we're going to go ahead and bring him up here in just a second. Um, did you have anything you wanted to show us right now? No, not really. Okay, very good. So think about it, and uh, if you think of anything, come ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and run on up. Very nice. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll bring you back. Okay. All right, Mr. Steve, if you would please approach the podium. <laughs> um, so just as a brief introduction, um, Again, Steve's not his real name, but uh, uh, this is my son. Um, I'm a huge Closure fan, and uh, I actually help with one of the Closure meetups in the DC area, uh, where I'm pleased to say that uh, this wonderful guy writes Common Lisp. Um, and the reason for that, aside from being an ordinary teenager, which is totally awesome, um, is that Closure doesn't happen to have any good kids programming books, whereas Conrad Barsky, who's a wonderful polymath, has Land of Bliss, but now Realm of Racket, right? And so these are actually good for kids. The Closure books seem to be aimed at 
pissed off Java developers. <laughs> and that's not a really a, a good uh, experience for kids to get started with. So um, yeah, so it's something where uh, we didn't want to start them on programming um, because, uh, again, I feel like uh, coding is not necessarily the right way to get, make the good first impression to help the, get them interested in, in, in doing more and learning more. Um, Steve happens to like Redstone uh, more than uh, Hero Brian. Um, and so what are we doing here? This is servers. For programmers, you obviously recognize the... Well, not, well, not necessarily. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> sorry. Haven't missed a day of school because I'm sick in two years, and the second I get here, I get a cold. <laughs> um, just have some interesting stuff. This is a logic gate. It's a not gate. So this lever represents the input, and then we have the output is this lamp. So if the input is false or it's not transmitting a signal, the output's going to be on, and then reverse. And then we have an AND gate. So explain what the, uh, what do we see here? So this is, we have torches, right? Are these a special kind? Are these that regular fire? Torches um, carry a charge of either one or zero, kind of like computer bits. Mm -hmm. And that uh, when the block they're on is being powered, for example, by this lever, then it'll reverse the charges. And it's by default on. So <coughs> here we've got just the output is on only if both inputs are off. but. And that just broke it. OK, then. And so what are you using here to do this sort of applied electrical engineering? Um, there's a material you can find in survival. It's fairly common called redstone, which is kind of like a conductive wire, I guess, that will transmit a signal from a source, like one of the torches, or we have a block. And you can do some pretty cool things with it. For example, this loads so much faster than my computer. Um, <laughs> for example, this is a mini game that someone created using completely vanilla, no exterior alterations, redstone. And it's Fairly complicated. This isn't the complicated part. <laughs> <laughs> so these are circuits, right? These are all circuits. Uh -huh. And the most interesting part are these blocks, command blocks, that you can input command line things into, and it'll execute it when they receive a signal from Redstone. And that's kind of like an if that when it receives an update, if the condition in it is true, it'll output a signal. And you can get some pretty cool results from that. As you can see, this is a kind of tower defense sort of thing. And I think I already broke it when looking around, so I can't exactly show you. But so, uh, so, you can, so these circuits are pretty low level, right? You can build calculators in Minecraft. I right? didn't transfer Not that world. Yeah, there's the same guy made a working calculator for function. Once again, completely vanilla, just using command blocks and Redstone. So yeah, it gets pretty interesting. And the thing that's cool about this is it actually people are like, hey, if I do X, Y, Z, then it'll make this happen, and all my friends will be impressed, and we can have fun with it. And I just crashed the game. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're on the latest snapshots. So. Anyway, yeah. yeah, there are a lot of crashes in this. But yeah, and then. This is a PVP sort of team-oriented capture the flag map that my friend and I have been working on for the past month or so. And then you get the circuitry. This is an old version. This has hardly any of the circuits. But all of this stuff was because people wanted to have fun, and they just decided to make that happen. Like, what do you mean? Created all this. So mm -hmm. basically the motivation behind this was we wanted to make a PvP map that we could play on a server and have all our friends together and have some fun with it. And we just decided to do this. And let's see if I snapshot's broken it.
Yep. So, so, but the intent was you could have classes and weapons with enchantments? Yes, there are different classes and weapons and stuff. And then there's teams, there are four teams that are all trying to go against each other mm -hmm. to eliminate each other and in the end be the last one standing and capture all the other team's flags to kind of capture the flag. So it, sort of did this thing. require any special plugins on their part or on your part? Um, this did not. This is completely vanilla. However, some people, I can't show you because this is a new update and it's not compatible, but some people have gone beyond redstone and circuitry and they've actually written Java code to create text interfaces and new commands and completely new game modes in this game. And it's completely, you don't have to do anything, you can just log on and play. So that's another motivation. If you like stuff like that, then, like, hey, let's write some Java and make it happen, or something that interprets into Java. Sure. Right. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so real briefly, uh, and get your air quotes ready. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the Hunger Games. So, <laughs> people have created a thousand server network that runs Hunger Games. There's no internet. Daily, there's no internet. It runs Hunger Games, resets repeatedly, and it's completely Java operated, completely and completely self-sufficient. And there's, if you go on websites, for Minecraft, then you'll actually find, even without quotes, you'll find Hunger Games maps. It's just a genre now that people have completely created out of this because they wanted to be creative. Yeah, I mean, they have the cornucopia, and then this is, again, the last person standing, um, totally community um, developed. And they've moved, uh, it's such a big thing where they've actually moved the servers closer to the data. I'm sorry, the people. People are not data. Um, but they, it's so important that they, the, the network latency is good that they have you know, regional servers. Right? This is something, you know, I just want to highlight the fact, if you take away anything from this, your kids are playing the Hunger Games with other you know, random people uh, if they have access to Minecraft multiplayer. So uh, there is a lot out there. Um, so uh, let me think. So is there uh, any particular teacher you might like to thank we have a chance? Um, thinking about going back to the standardized oh. tests topic. Yes. I had one teacher that really did make a difference, and that's something that I activated on accident. Um, <laughs> Focus. Okay, then. So I had a teacher, and I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's not a coincidence, but he was the teacher of the one kind of like standard class. He was a science teacher, and that is the one year that science does not have to study and cram for a standards of learning test. So you don't have to teach people, OK, here's the standards. And if you don't learn them, well, then you're going to fail and retake the class. And I would go up to him after class and say, hey, blah, 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 special relativity. And we'd get into these like five minute long discussions, and I'd be late for my next class and get yelled at. But point is, people who teachers, the teachers that make a difference aren't the ones that teach just to these standardized sort of guidelines that the state set out. They're people that actually do try to make a difference and take interest in their students' interests and kind of their whole personalities. And this guy, he was awesome. He earns money during power outages by generating his own power and selling it back to the power, power station. The, the solar panels, you've got a Solar panel, in. yeah, all that sort of thing. So let's actually see. This is another kind of like a mini game that someone created in vanilla Minecraft without any Java code editing it. That's like, it's seriously a game. Three, two or three hours playtime. You've got bosses, you've got different loot sets, you've got mobs. It's kind of like cannon fodder enemies. And this is pretty impressive. But it's just created because people decided they wanted to do stuff like this. And I think that's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, totally agree. Um, so, uh, we're good. Uh, we're going to uh, start uh, taking questions here in just a second. Um, one thing that I did want to say is that as good as Minecraft is and as excellent as it is, uh, <clears throat> it, it's not good enough, right? Nothing is good enough. Not, not nothing, but no thing, right? Because people are are sort of the problem, and people are the solution. Um, if we get, um, thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so uh, you know, you don't want to leave the schools. Leave it to schools to make your kids help your kids become creative because they'll get SOL. Standards of learning. Okay, that's exactly what I meant. Um, so don't just leave it to the schools. Uh, if you leave it to the friends, they'll get better at competition uh, and collaboration. If they play games that allow changes by anyone, such as Minecraft, then that will help their creativity. Um, but it's, again, not enough. You can't just throw in Minecraft and hope that they're going to have like, good creative skills. Uh, what's worked for us at home is 30 minutes a day, five days a week. They get creative time. Right? We, we say you have two or three different types of options. Um, I'm not allowed to show it here, but um, young Steve has done some stick figure animation that he turned into more animations with like sounds, and there's uh, very amusing. And um, that was something that, that was uh, nice to see. It was well-rounded. It was an aspect of him that he didn't know about. I, I would never have, because I'm not talented like that, I would have never suggested it. It was something that, that creative time allowed him to pull out. Right? Something He just had access to something. And he played with it, and he liked it, so we made it better. Got him sticks, which is a really nice uh, vector animation program. And then he was using what QuickTime Player. How how are you stitching the sounds in? Um, iMovie. iMovie, and it's something he just picked up and was playing around with. They, they had the, the tools that he had at hand, um, and I like them very much. Even though I'm not allowed to show them to you, they are uh, definitely wonderful. Um, and it's something. So we do the creative time. So we do it with both Steve and Hero Brian. Uh, uh, if they're unlucky during the summer, they have to use Khan Academy. Uh, they don't like it. I think it's a wonderful thing. They, they, it's a really good approach to doing standardized tests. Because, <laughs> so you know it's good, right? Um, <laughs> uh, because they, it's not just a bzz if you get a wrong answer. There's streaks, and there's, there's all sorts of monitoring you can do. I, I really do like that. It helps keep their skills sharp over the summer. So anyways, don't just leave it to schools. Don't just leave it to the friends. If you are in a position to influence a young child, just give them, just like a musical instrument, just like anything, give them time, help them focus, give them a few options and just iterate on it. Because creativity is a skill, and everyone has it. You just have to help it grow. It's just sort of intangible. It's an investment, but it'll be there when you need it. That's my take. So um, if I can get Steve and here, Brian, back up here. Uh, we're going to take uh, questions. Um, this is, uh, it could be uh, uh, pretty much anything. Um, I'll come up and, yes. So uh, do I have any questions? Gentleman in the brown shirt. Okay. Um, one for you and one for your kids. Uh, for you, uh, I have a preschool-aged kid, and I'm very analytical and you know nerd. And what did you find was the best way to relate to your children at that age to kind of progress into such a uh, articulate state as they are today? And for your kids, uh, I'm curious to know what you guys appreciated most about your parents providing to you. Okay, so I'm going to restate the questions. You guys can go first. Um, the kids, um, how awesome are mom and dad? <laughs> and helping, uh, maybe, do you guys want to repeat the, you can restate the question, but that's number one. How do you, uh, you know, what, what, what did you guys like and dislike with the approach we took? Um, I liked that uh, um, they understood that sometimes we really wanted to get on and, like, we have like set times during the day where we can play video games and when we can't. You know, sometimes when we're bored, we, well, I, not really my brother, but I ask if I can, you know, get on when I'm not allowed to. And instead of just saying immediately no, they actually think about it and the answer is usually yes. To play so, creative stuff, right? Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Like Minecraft. <laughs> maybe. No, yes. I guess very good. Steve, did you have any thoughts? Um, not really much the same that there's a set, pretty much the same that there's a set amount of video game time that you have per day, and then generally you can have somewhat unlimited educational time where you can do stuff like coding, common lisp. I did Scratch originally, that was my kind of intro into programming. Minecraft, um, Code Academy, I heard that mentioned in the Hopscotch presentation. That's pretty cool. It's also accessible from school, which is nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. OK, um, great. So the question uh, was from a, a parent's perspective. If you're analytical, um, how, do you help, how do you help them become excited and go along these lines? Um, you let them pull. You give them choices. Because they don't know what they want, right? 
But Seymour Popper says it really well in Mindstorms. Kids taught themselves to you know, pick their head up, to look around, to roll over, to, to crawl, to walk. They teach themselves so much, starting from so little. Um, so you want to give them the ability to keep teaching themselves and not force them down any one thing. It's, it's a per kid thing. Right? You really want to support them, pay attention, respond to what they like. Um, I wish I had like, an approach that would generally work for everybody. Um, it, my best suggestion is you just, you just block aside time consistently. Um, the suggestion to play board games is wonderful. Um, hopscotch, I think, is fantastic because it's very narrowly focused and it looks nice. Uh, Scratch is available if you need something cross-platform. Uh, and Scratch is really nice because it's, it's so things that work together fit together. What are you doing to the port? <laughs> are you spawning ender dragons? No, it's a wither, right? It's a wither. Yes, okay. but I can't spawn. And Don't spawn I, ender I, dragons. Yeah, thank you for the idea. <laughs> so did that answer your question? It's a little roundabout. OK, very good. Uh, yes, ma'am. My question's for the kids. Um, great great uh, demos, by the way. We've got some sales engineers at work. Um, thank but you. But I'm wondering for the, the, when you're building the different components and you know, you're using them with different levers and different elements to sort of pull these engineering concepts together. How difficult did it seem when you were kind of first learning those things and kind of what helped you grow in that to, to build a more complex thing? So do you want to restate the question? Did you, did you follow like? Yes. Um, well, let's see. I didn't really have any strategies except practicing over and over again. So, so to, to your say, so the question was, how do you become familiar with the more sophisticated things? Um, so, the redstone is kind of the, the most complicated thing. I mean, that sort of drives oh, yeah. most of the, the other they stuff. Added raw JSON inputs. It's awesome. I forgot to show it. Raw JSON is totally awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the sort of thing. So we showed the logic gates, and I thought, what if I tried to show him how to do this in you know something else like public static void? Maybe not. Right? It's, he wouldn't enjoy trying to take that approach with that sort of a tool. But here he's doing gates for fun. Um, so. There's not, like as far as levers and, and some of these things that are, that are valuable in the mechanical world, I didn't see a lot of that in Minecraft. The redstone, she's not, uh, it's not something that's interested her. Uh, she's in center running the social network of her friends and making them pay taxes and there's voting and there's, you know, this is something she's really latched onto. And so I really encourage that. Um, the young man, when he picked up, I don't know, he picked up redstone, just going crazy, YouTube, it's crazy. The stuff that there's there to build from, uh, it was their personal interest. So did you have anything, any special people or things that caught your attention? Um, um, I kind of just learned it because I saw something watching Minecraft YouTube videos. I saw someone doing a playthrough of a vanilla redstone map. And I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. So I wanted to try to make something like it. And it just kind of all came from there. Um, I, yeah, pretty much the same thing. I saw a couple of videos and my dad it kind of introduced it to me. And then, I don't know why, but I kind of got latched, latched into it from that first afternoon of playing the crappy beta version. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, let me see how much I have time. Oh, we got, we're actually, we're about it on time. I'll take uh, two more questions, one from each side. Phil. No. So the question was, have you looked into, oh, uh, have I looked into the, like a logo style, like logo style true graphics mod, um, Steve? Um, I've looked at it a bit. Um, I'm considering selling, I generally, when I look at mods, instead of looking like, hey, that's awesome, I should download it, I generally look at it at how can I do this without mods? Like how can I do the stuff that people have written Java for with just redstone mm -hmm. and the command blocks and stuff? That's kind of one of my motivations. Okay. I will definitely take a look at it. After reading through Mindstorms, I think that the Logo Turtle approach is really, really good. And I wish that I had started with that with them a long time ago. Um, because it's very concrete, it's very tangible. Uh, if you look at Mindstorms, you can look at the beginning. You, know, you start drawing the squares, and that's fine. You try and draw the house, um, the triangle roof, and the roof is like inside the box. So you, you realize these long lists of instructions become unwieldy. right? So you start building subroutines and procedures just from building stick figures. Like, it works that in organically. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So I will definitely check that out. I have one, time for one more question from the side. What plugins do you have on your servers? None. None. 
No. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so you just examine the chat log? Do you, you, you just take a look at the communication log to see who who's chatting? Do you recommend any specific mods? No, I was, uh, I was just wondering. We're at, so um, we're actually building some server-side plugins to do that kind of stuff. Really? So, um, Anything you want to, like, is there? There's actually a, uh, I just tweeted, there's a, uh, uh, there's a course that uh, a 13-year-old kid is teaching on how to build server plugins in Scala. Really? Yeah, nice. So my my nine-year-old nine and I are doing it, and it's a blast. Nice. All very good. Very good. Um, OK, yes. Actually, my friend, the one I was working on the kind of capture the flag map on, he taught himself all sorts of like basic level Java and server in and outs of that sort of stuff because he wanted to install plugins on the server. So doing stuff like that is great. Great, wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, and the very last thing, I need to do a couple of thanks. Um, uh, thank you, Steve and here, Brian. This is, this is not as easy as it looks. and was especially hard to get started, so you did a good job, so thank you very much. Um, and um, it's very important that they thank uh, my beautiful wife, their wonderful mother, for uh, years of support. So guys, go give her a hug, and uh, that's all I have.